Hello there everyone, my name is Callum and I was a part of the Rhino Anywhere team that um, went to the AEC Tech 2023 New York Hackathon and I just wanted to give you a brief overview of Rhino Anywhere, what it does, how you build it and how we can get going with it. Now it's not a straight simple plugin like a Grasshopper plugin, there is a, a server component front end and so, so I think this tutorial is a bit more necessary. But to talk about Rhino Anywhere, Rhino Anywhere um, was an idea that um, Sergey came up with and the idea is to take a headed version of Rhino and when I say headed I mean that you actually open up Rhino, you can see the GUI, the menus and everything is available to you as opposed to headless where Rhino is closed and hidden and you can still interact with it. So like I said, we're going to take a headless version of Rhino and transmit the viewport pixel by pixel um, into a web browser. The point of this being that you can have Rhino anywhere. Something I really wish we'd gotten a chance to do at the hackathon is put Rhino on something daft, like um, uh, a Kindle or one of those smart fridges. That would have been wonderful. Um, and if at the end of this tutorial you manage to do that, please, please show us. Um, we would all love to see that uh, in, in case we don't get a chance. So, uh, but that's, that sounds sort of useless, but really it means you can put Rhino anywhere and you can skin it anywhere you want, and um, which is quite wonderful. You could create a, a more colorful, simplistic version of Rhino that just lets you create cuboids, toruses, spheres, cones, etc., and subtract and add them together and create a version for children. That'd be very cool. Or you could even create a version of Rhino that has, is specifically made to allow modeling geometry without the, without the use of... Um, the entire dexterousness of, of the hands for someone who doesn't have that. That would also be very cool. Anyway, without further ado, I think it's time we clone and get going. Let's quite simply do a git clone. Marvellous. And if we open the directory, we'll have the front end and the plugin. Um, so for the plugin, I'm going to open that in Visual Studio, and we're going to start Rhino with that. On the other computer that we have here, what we're going to do is we're going to start the front end. So let's start the plugin first, because I genuinely believe that one's simpler. And that might be because I'm biased, because I know C Sharp and Rhino a lot more than I know JavaScript and Node. Excellent, so the project's loaded, all of the NuGets are going to get restored, and we can quite simply click Rhino Anywhere Debug. Excellent. And to start the server, we can quite simply type in start Rhino anywhere. Now, to show how this works properly, you need two computers. So I'm going to move over here. We're going to start the front end. So I've already got it cloned on this machine. We can CD into the front end, Rhino anywhere front end. And we should be able to just run npm run dev. And that should start the front end for us. Excellent. So the local host, i.e. the local front end, is on this local host here. And I can see on my screen, if I refresh it, let's just double check that. Yes, 5174. Now I'm going to enter the IP address of the other machine, which I know for a fact is 192.168.4.42. Yep, great. And now that it's listening for connections, we can click Start Rhino Anywhere. Let's zoom out a little bit on this one. Great. So we can see that as I move the mouse on the web browser, it moves the mouse in the actual instance of Rhino. And these buttons on the left here allow us to start commands. We can see when we click box, the box command starts. And then we can start to click in here and, type a, and show a box. We can also zoom in and out. And we can also, um, I believe we could do orbit. Orbit seems to quite be working. Um, one thing you may know is that the color is a bit different. Now we had a slight issue with um, the color, uh, just a translation error of the color and it made it a lot slower. Maybe we'll fix that at some point. But hopefully this gives you an idea of what's actually happening. The exact viewport from Rhino is being sent pixel by pixel to the web browser where we can control it here. 
Um, and of course I can type in other Rhino commands. So for example, I can type in sphere and you'll see here it actually um, su does suggest the commands that we can see in the viewport, which is rather wonderful. So I can draw a sphere here. Um, let's run that again, sorry. So let's create a point and then we'll create the sphere. Now you'll notice that you don't see what's happening in that Rhino viewport in this one when it comes to the preview. And that's a fundamental constraint of just how we're grabbing the image from Rhino. And that's something that can hopefully be improved in the future. Um, and for some reason with my network, the, the JPEGiness of the image is, the image's quality is quite low. Um, but I don't have that same problem on um, other computers. There we go. I'm going to try an orbit now. I was using the trackpad there, so that didn't work very well. Um, I suppose you can see it's quite easy to get booted in and tested in debugging. And I hope that you find that useful in trying out Rhino anywhere and coming up with some more magnificent ideas of how it might best be used. Thank you for watching.